Okay, now we're going to try and come up with an expression about how pressure changes as a wave passes. So in order to do that, we're going to consider a small volume of air here in the tube that we described before. So we're going to assume that this tube has some cross-sectional area given by capital A. So capital A is now standing for a cross-sectional area, not an amplitude. Okay, so initially, before there's any wave, we're considering a volume of air here, and the volume is given by the cross-sectional area times the length of the tube. And then we put our pulse through the air here, and that causes this air to move. But it doesn't all move an equal amount. The amount it moves depends on its distance from this end here. So the, the piece of air which was here moves some distance, S1 here, whereas the piece of air at this other end moves some different distance, S2, to that point there because it initially had a different X and so it's going to move a different amount. And so the change in volume in this case is equal to this cross-sectional area times the difference between these two S's. So this will be S1 minus S2. And if those ends both move the same amount, then this would be zero. But it's not because there's a pulse going through and so it depends on the distance from this end here. Okay, now to simplify this, we need to use a definition, which probably you, those of you doing engineering will come across a fair amount. We're going to be looking at the bulk modulus, which is given the symbol B, and that is defined as the volume stress over the volume strain. Now the volume stress is equal to the change in force over the cross-sectional area. And as we've seen before, a force divided by an area is a pressure. So that's equal to the change in pressure. And the volume strain is equal to the change in volume divided by the initial volume. So we just leave that there. And we've got a minus sign here as well. So what we're trying to work out is well how much the pressure changes. So now rearranging this equation, we've got that our change in pressure is equal to the negative of the bulk modulus divided by the change in volume divided by the initial volume. Okay, now we're just going to substitute in. Delta P is equal to minus B, and we said it was delta V on VI. Delta V is A delta S and V is A delta X. So now the A's will cancel out and taking the partial derivative, so replacing this capital delta with a little delta to indicate that we're taking just a very small increment, we can write this as minus B dS dX. And then substituting in, we said S was equal to S max cos KX minus omega T. They're moving with simple harmonic motion about their equilibrium positions. So then taking the derivative of this, our negatives cancel out because we get negative sine kx minus omega t, and this k has to be put out the front as well. So this gives us an expression for the pressure change in terms of, how, of the equilibrium displacement. So a quick quiz. If you blow across the top of an empty soft drink bottle, a pulse of sound travels down through the air in the bottle. At the moment the pulse reaches the bottom of the bottle, what is the correct description of the displacement of the elements of air from their equilibrium positions and the pressure of the air at this point? A. The displacement and pressure are both maximum. B. The pressure and displacement are both minimum. C. The displacement is zero and the pressure is maximum. Or D. The displacement is zero and the pressure is minimum.